Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs for General Disturbance. This is a T100LT. It's a tier 10 Soviet light tank. It's located on the south spawn of Ghost Town and it's under the command of the baseman from hell. Yes, he's riding in a light tank again. And um, let's see how he gets on in this game. Okay, 100 millimeter main gun. It's capable of 300 alpha, penetrating 230mm is standard APCR with the premium rounds which are just AP. He's capable of doing 248mm, so it jumps from 230 to 248. Not much of a change, but might be enough in certain circumstances. It's a very flat tank, and it is a light tank, so of course it's a spotter, and it's got light tank properties, you know, same camo on the move as stationary well he spotted somebody going up that hill and yep it's a caro and he spotted the Sheridan now in fact the Sheridan was cheeky enough to take the opposite position and as that's a threat to our teammates then he did actually fire around into the guy to gave up his um his location but um got around into the guy to try and persuade him to go away from the bushes but now he has to find a new position because, of course, if the guy fires on those bushes, he might actually connect with the uh, base man. He's still spotting people. Spotted um, another tank in the town and another one, a uh, Camp Panzer 7 PE, -E, who's up on the west side. And yes, they are firing at these bushes just to try and determine where he is. And the Sheridan's come back. Yes, I think this technique of moving backwards and forward lessens, lessens the chance that they're going to get a fortunate chance of uh, getting a pen. But yeah, he was spotted again because, of course, he fired. Of course, most people recognize that when you fire a main gun, there's a huge flash, but it's actually the smoke that gives you away. There's a massive amount of smoke comes out the barrel and it acts almost like a here I am to everybody. Oh, and um, yeah, he's got a problem now. There's the Sheridan again, but the teammates, uh, the enemy, are getting rather close. As you can see them up there. We might have to use the speed of this vehicle, which is 72 kilometers an hour, to get away from the enemy as and when. Oh, and an Object 268 version 4 has been spotted in the town as well. So he's spotted a lot of enemy already. Now this was a joint project in the 1960s to produce um, uh, a light tank that was actually relatively fast, but um, it only had enough armor to protect it from 90 millimeter rounds. He's furiously trying to say, get those guys in the, in the town. But um, unfortunately his teammates are more concerned about the Caro 45 and the Camp Panzer Sieben, which are out on the west side of the map at the moment. But there's guys up uh, near our camp area on the hill. They can engage the Caro and the Camp Panzer. And now we've spotted another one. An FP4005 come into the play on the west side of the map. And who we got here? Well, he gets one round into the Camp Panzer 7. And he has to pull back straight away again because he was spotted. I'd hate to get hit by one of those FD. 405 Hesh rounds. If they did hit him, it would be pretty devastating. In fact, the enemy seems to be doing rather well because we're two down and they've got position. They've actually managed to move most of us out of the town. There's only an object 277 in there and he's already badly taking damage. We're now, we've got a patrol duty medal according to this for being the only one spotting six enemy tanks whilst they were damaged. But the way he keeps moving backwards and forwards, I think he might be exposing his side reference point on his port side. And that could be a problem if the enemy spots that. There are still enemy up there. But that gun just turned in our general direction. Ah, he managed to get away. Use the forward speed, accelerate away. Well, the good news now is that it appears and he's got a lovely shot right up the rear 
of that camp Pazza, but he doesn't get anything for it. Okay, it appears now that they're getting to the point where he can actually start going active. But he's got to be careful because he is only a light tank and he only has 1,500 health. He could lose a lot of that very, very quickly if he gets hit by a Heshbon. Well, the Heshbon is down. He's gone. Taken out by our IS-7 and now base man feels free to actually move up on the enemy cap area and also their hill and see what he can spot. And he's still spotting the enemy. Now, will he be spotted? No, he wasn't spotted. Okay, no six sense has gone off. They don't know he's here, but he can see that 268 version 4. He's not that far away, actually. Decided to change position again, and I think he might go up on top of the hill. Got to worry about that 268 version 4, though, because he's not that far away. Oh, he's got a bush mechanic uh, shot there. Gets a hit for 300, an average roll. Go for it again. No, he doesn't need to. The 907 finished him off. Okay, so we're on the move again. And yes, he is definitely going to go up the hill this time. We don't know where the Sheridan's gone. But I suspect the Sheridan's on the other side of the map at the moment. Mainly because their forces have now basically captured our cap area. Although they've not gone into the cap. They think that they're two up and therefore they can benefit. Bush mechanic shot, gets a pen, low roll, object 705A. Can he get it again? I think so. And he does. And he's using standard ammo, so of course he's going to get the full benefit. Go for it again. And he hit the tracks this time. Didn't do any damage other than the tracks. But I think he's now aiming for the rear of the vehicle. No, the wrong angle there wrong angle the guy turned just enough but the 705 he goes down to the 907 so that's another kill for that 907 after taking out the 268 version 4 now where is the rest of the enemy they're well <laughs> they're way up on us now they're four tanks ahead and he's actually platooning uh, or getting a request to platoon with the Rhino Sorrente I think that's optimistic on the Rana Sorrentes uh, case because he's uh, actually dead. It's only the base man and the Object 907, the really good player, who's been picking up kills on... Ah, uh... oh, here we go. EBR 105 comes into sight. Tries to get a shot on there. Has to pull back because surely he was spotted. No, the 277 didn't see him. And here comes the 105. What a shot! Bang on target, and uh, oh, we took one from the Sheridan. 359, it was the armor piercing round, or APCR actually, on from the Sheridan. But they are now capping, because I think they realize that these last two are going to be the most difficult to bring down, because of course they are really good players. Here it comes, we're going to get a shot on this guy's rear. Hello, you're gone. That was a nice kill. Solid kill. Two kills now for base man, but we've got to get to the cap area. And as we're the light tank, it's our duty to actually find him uh, or find what's in the cap and allow the 907 to get shots at range. So base man's going to go up to the bushes first, see if that helps. Can you see anything? No, he can't. He's going to have to get closer. Oh, he does spot it. He just pokes his head out of the bushes, but he did get spotted, and now he has to move. The Sheridan was right up on top of the hill. He took a round from the mouse. So lucky to survive, but he's still got plenty of hit points to trade. He's gonna go into the town and try and spot from there. 907 has got into a position where he can shoot. He just needs the spotting to actually tell us. Okay, we've got a spot. The mouse knows that he's been spotted. Now he knows that where we are, because of course we fired from the town and he would have seen us. But we're going to go back. There's a camp panzer in, in the... Oh, no, it's not the camp panzer. That's his name. And there's the... The... Uh, the Sheridan. And he takes a round for 323. That's a high roll. Kind of um, tells him off for uh, going near the bushes. Round through the side of the mouse. That's a good one. 259 low roll again. And the mouse goes down to the 907. 
and he's got three kills now. There's the Sheridan. Sheridan goes down to the 907 as well. So two kills with two shots. And now it's one on Much one obliged. with the uh, with the batch at 155.58 in the Cogra gun carriage. So two tanks versus the two RT. This should be a lot even now. <laughs> well, mainly because Baseman is an RT player. So he does know RT tactics. He knows where the RT might be. And yep, he's actually going off to the east side because he thinks one of them's over there. And I tend to agree with him. The 907 is going after the Conqueror gun carriage. That just leaves uh, Baseman to try and find the 155.58. He's going to try and cut this guy off. Oh, didn't auto aim on. Now he has. Gets one in. The Conqueror blows his wad. And now he's got no chance against the follow-up shot and the 907 takes it so another kill for the 907 who's oh now the bat chat he is on the east side of the map that was correct but he did get a very accurate hit there we received damage for 269 but it was a 155 millimeter shell so that's only splash not actual damage just to finding him okay now let's get some hit points off him please oh and he Managed to make him fire another round. And the ram kill for the 907 finishes the game as a victory for a game that was basically a loss right up until the last moments. Here's the end of battle results. And that was a first class tank for the base man from hell in the T100 LT. He got a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage. A bruiser for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got seven. A fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points for his own vehicle. A patrol duty for being the only one spotting six enemy tanks whilst they were being damaged. And also a confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else in his team. At least six tanks subsequently taken out by other teammates. Let's have a look at the team score for this game. Well, the highest damage turned out to be the Object 907. No surprise there because he was actually benefiting from base man spotting. 5,672 hit points of damage went to him. He got a high caliber defender, confederate, and a top gun, and the Pascucci's as well, because he did kill both enemy RT. In fact, his list of medals is actually quite impressive if you think about it, but I think it's down to the fact he did get great support from base man. Let's have a look at the second highest. Well, that's the Rhino Sorrente, 5,143. So actually, he was a good player. Um, and he was trying, I think, seeking to benefit from platooning with base man. And the third highest was the mouse on the enemy team. 4,705 hit points of damage went to that player. Base man managed 2,380. So you can see he was actually doing damage as well as spotting. And he took taking the opportunity towards the end of the game, not only to spot, but to actually put a few rounds in. And it was having some effect. When it came to kills, we can see that, yes, it's the 907 again. Wow, Crispy got six kills out of that game. And we've got a number of players all managed to get three kills apiece, which included the Rhino Sorrente, the Mouse, the Conqueror Gun Carriage, who was a good player, and the Object 277, all with three kills. And then the Base Man with only two right at the end. But then he's actually um, in third place when you consider the others are all joint second. And when it came to base XP... Well, there's only two players in it, of course, Object 907, uh, 1,211 base experience points went to him, 1,138 went to the base man, they were the only two players who managed to get over 1,000 base in the game, with the next one being the Rhino Sorrente at 892. He fired 19 rounds out of that game, 15 of them were direct hits and 9 of them were penetrations. Some of the objects he was firing at, the, he just hit them at the wrong angle, tier 10 game. If you fire a shell which doesn't have a huge amount of penetration, and as I said at the start of the uh, game, they, there's not a lot of difference between premium rounds and standard rounds in this in this uh, tank. So, uh, so it's bound to bounce off the uh, the tracks of some of these tanks if you hit them at range. He got 2,380 hit points of damage, of which 1,483 were at more than 300 meters. Yes, there were some close shots, including that EBR-105. He did a lovely death spiral as he got wiped out by the base. Very close shot as well, and the guy was moving very quickly. Three hits received, two penetrations. That's because he got spotted. 
and somebody was dialed in. I think the Sheridan was one of the ones who actually got a shot on him. One hit by way of splash. That was the enemy RT, the Bat Chat 155-58, who knew that time was up because, of course, Face Man had already made a move in his direction. So he knew he was going to get found, but he just used the spotting from the kill on the Concrete Gun Carriage to get one last chance to take out the Base Man. Shell landed just nearby, but it was enough to do a bit of damage, but not take him out. Seven enemy vehicles spotted, eight enemy vehicles damaged, two killed, 4,091 hit points of spotting assist. So combined damage, basically six and a half thousand or near six and a half thousand overall. 21 defense points as well, because he did hit the mouse while he was in the cap and got a shot through the side, made it easier for the uh, uh, for his teammates in the object 907 to get the kill on the uh, mouse. And when it came to credits, he actually made a loss, 4,044 credits loss. But that's mainly down to consumables because he did have big 40,000 for consumables. He didn't have a whole lot for ammunition, considering the fact that he fired 19 rounds. Most of them were the APCR. And as I said, that's down to the fact even the APCR, there's not much difference between the penetration on the APCR and the AP. You might as well just fire the APCR because it's cheaper and still have the same effect most of the time. Uh, so, yes, he did suffer a small loss, but he did get a positive on XP for 8,535 altogether. So what a great game, because this was, as, as Baseman says, um, it was a two versus six. In fact, there were four tanks down at one point, and it looked like it was all over that the enemy was going to, to win the game. And in fact, they decided to go no cap, kill all. And that was a big mistake, especially the EBR 105, who tried to take on two enemy tanks basically on his own and paid with uh, his life with his tank. But the enemy soon realized, oops, this is a bit of a problem because we're now starting to hemorrhage tanks. And they went back to capping instead, but it was too late because then with the brilliant spotting from the base man and the excellent slotting from the 907, they were taking the enemy out one by one until it was all over. So I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel, leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.